I'm trying to go back with Jesus. Amen. So we are at the, I mean, we are just close. We are close. And I have you know, this is just a battle. You, you're just getting battle tested right now. That's all it is. You're getting battle tested to see if you can fight your way through with your weapons of warfare, prayer and supplication to see if you can fight your way through because this is just a minor test. Just wait until the vaccine hits and they tell you you either take it or you don't go back to work or they demonize all of the religious people or Christian people call us fanatics because we don't want to take it. Somebody sent me a video of a guy just going crazy. They had to restrain this guy and lock him in his car because he was going around just trying to hurt people that didn't have masks on because he felt like, felt like they were a threat to humanity. This dude done watch CNN probably all day, watch the New York Times all day, and now he really believes that if you're not wearing a mask, you are a murderer. Y'all, we are at the end of this thing. So you better make sure you are ready. You better make sure you are focused. Amen? All right. Well, you know, folks been commenting and telling me, say, you sound angry. I sound like your daddy should have sounded. That's what I sound like. I sound like your daddy should have sounded. But because all you heard was a woman's voice, you think I'm mean and tyrannical. I'm just preaching the gospel. I mean, how long y'all know me? Have I always talked like this? Since I was fat, skinny, whatever the year was. Ain't nothing changed. That's some foolishness. Amen. I just talk loud. But today I want to talk about, and I've been on this repentance and obedience thing, and I want y'all to understand something first. Um, well, I'll just start reading this. Uh, we are saved by grace, not works. How many of you know that? So it's a gift of God. Look at somebody say it's a gift of God. I don't teach a works-based faith. It's not by works. There's nothing we can do to earn it. If that would be the case, we already failed. So we can't earn it. It is a gift given to us by God. Amen. But we don't take it so far as to say that we're not responsible for working out this gift in our life. What I mean is when the word says work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's a mandate. That tells me that it's something we are working within us to make us or to change our behavior and make us better suited as examples for God. Does that make sense? So though it is a free gift, we don't just trample on the gift. We definitely don't take advantage of the gift and try to senselessly sin because we have the gift. Amen? Amen? Okay. Y'all out your cars now. I need to hear something. So we are saved by grace, not by works. But listen, it's through our belief, which is faith, that works uh, uh, through our belief that works meet of repentance are done. So through our faith, that same faith that we believe brought the gift of salvation, it's through that faith that works meet of the gift are done. That means when you're saved, look at somebody and say, you should act like it. You should act like it. Now at ABC, we're going to be acting like it. We're going to show each other love. You don't know where these folks came from. And I tell people all the time, you don't know who you talking to. I've had to counsel people through all kinds of things from murder to pimping to whatever the case. And I'm not telling you who they are because these people are claiming that they are new creations. So here at ABC, we're going to love people. Amen. But at the same time, we want to be responsible for what God has done. Meaning we want it to change change our behavior. Amen? Acts 26 and 20 says, but showed first unto them of Damascus 
and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet of repentance. So that's three things. Look at somebody and say repent, turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. So we cannot truly repent without believing and obeying God. So we have to believe and obey God to truly repent. I've told y'all, it's not just I'm sorry. You have to believe God to truly repent. Repentance requires that we go deeper than words and get into the heart of the matter. Why am I preaching this stuff? Because God wants us ready for his return. He wants us ready. He wants you ready. So he wants your repentance to take. Like trying to get an S curl. Remember you tried to get an S curl and still had, still had perm left? It didn't take. Well, it's the same thing with you. <laughs> what a ghetto illustration. But it's the same thing with you and your heart. If your heart still has something permanent on it. Uh-oh, see how I did that? <laughs> Scratch that. That's ridiculous. But if your heart still has the old man attached to it, then salvation's not going to take properly. You have to be willing to give up who you once were and become who God wants you to be. Amen? I love the word. Repentance requires that we go deeper into the heart of the matter. Why are we sin it. That's the one thing we do at ABC. We teach people the why. We're a why church. Why are you acting like that? Romans 6 and 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So people ask me all the time, and let me get into this real quick, but people ask me all the time, can a Christian smoke? No, they ask me. I mean, people, and they have serious questions. These are serious questions because the pastor's up preaching and his lip looked like an old car filter. You go speak to him and shake his hands and you get emphysema just talking to him. So they don't know. They don't know. Can a Christian smoke? Can a Christian drink hard liquor? Can he listen to secular music? Can I go get tattooed? Can I do secular dances? Folks ask me these questions. Constant email. Can I do, can I do this? But the question should be, why does a Christian need or desire these things? Okay? And this isn't poking fun at anyone. You may have a legitimate question. You may smoke. Whatever the case. But I'm answering the question now. The question is, why does a Christian need them? And obviously you need them or you wouldn't even be asking, can I keep it? Now, I grew up holding this, so it was certain things we knew right off the bat. When we get saved, you can't do that no more. It was just taught to us. But we're dealing with a generation where it's not taught clearly. Or some of these behaviors are exhibited by the church. Pastor having a step team come to the church, and they dance in the secular music and all this kind of stuff. And it just sends a confusing message to the body, and the folks don't know if they should or shouldn't be doing it. Right? Proverbs 14 and 12, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So folks can think it's right. But let me tell you something. What is the issue that is causing you to need to smoke? Smoking costs money. Hey Amen. You ain't going in the back yard and just rolling up whatever's growing back there and smoke. You spending money. So if you're spending money, there's a need there. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So if you're spending money, you need that. So why do you need that is the question. Why do you need to drink excessively? Why do you need to hear music that is unfruitful to you? Amen. What are the needs for these type of songs? What is going on? Well, let me tell you something. Whatever that substance is, is in the way. Substance. It's a substitute for what God could really do for you. So while you're grabbing a cigarette to calm you down or a blunt or whatever you're smoking,
to calm your nerves and fix the anxiety, that's telling me that something is up with your heart. And there's a part of you that is unyielded to God. Amen. You reach for the hard liquor. I guarantee you, if you got a journal and you journaled your life and you begin to journal every time you have to smoke, every time you go for a drink, every time you have to listen to some filthy music or some music that's not glorifying God or whatever, if you journal it, you will see a pattern. And there's a pattern that exists when a certain feeling, circumstance, or even a certain environment or whatever comes upon you, that need for that arises because you're trying to mask something else, a deeper issue. Can I preach to y'all today? And so it would behoove you to, to take inventory and find out exactly what it is. Because the worst thing you can do as a believer is walk around in a contradictory state or be in a contradiction. Meaning, I believe in God, but God doesn't solve my problems. I believe that God is great and I sing songs about him. But my real deep issues, I need a substance to abuse. I believe that the Bible is true. And I believe that God is real. But when things get really bad, I have to reach for something else. A, another spirit, which is what hard liquor is. They even call it a spirit. So what you're doing is you're taking, you're transitioning your mind. You're transitioning your heart to an earthly substance. When in actuality, the Holy Ghost is supposed to feel that need. And people ask me all the time, well, brother, I've been praying to be filled with the Holy Ghost and I just don't feel like I'm filled. Well, if you don't feel like you feel, you're definitely not filled. Well, what do I do? Get filled. How do I get filled? I don't know how you get filled. The Bible tells me to ask for it. But he says some things you ask for, because you ask amiss, you don't receive them. That must mean that there are some things in your way that you're, you're not willing to give up. And it's blocking access to the very God that could answer it in the place of what it is that you won't give up. There is something in you that needs addressing. You are obeying the wrong things. You are obeying the lust of your body instead of God's spirit. Galatians 5 and 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. These things are contrary one to another that ye cannot do the things you would. Now listen, repentance is turning from sin and changing your belief. That's what repentance is. Repentance is not just, I'm sorry. Repentance is turning from it and then changing your belief about it. No longer believing that it's okay to live that way or commit those things. You see what I'm saying? It's coming to a realization something is wrong with this. So if I repent, I'm repenting because I've come to the realization something is wrong. My belief has changed. I now believe that something is wrong with this. So if I believe that something is wrong with this, that means I can't do that anymore. Because if I do something that is wrong, then I become wrong for doing it. Uh, uh, when our issues are addressed, our belief will change and the power of God will rescue us from the sinful mindset that requires sinful practices. I'm teaching you how to pray. You don't just pray, Lord, forgive me, and then jump up. No, Lord, forgive me for what I've been doing. Now show me why I'm doing it, and let's heal the area that's messed up, that's causing me to keep going back and doing it. Man, if you pray the right way, you'll turn a 10-second prayer into an hour prayer, if you're praying right. If you realize how filthy and jacked up you are, you'll spend more time there getting fit and less time worrying about what somebody else is doing. But when we address our issues, it'll change our belief. Ephesians 4 and 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So you don't just repent. 
But you got to put on the new man. The new man don't need a blunt. The new man don't need jack. The new man don't need toxic poisons in his system to cloud his mind so he won't worry about his problems anymore. The new man uses the power of the Holy Ghost to solve those problems. When our belief changes, our actions will change. The way we believe causes our actions and attitude toward disobedience to change. I tell people all the time, until you begin to feel what God feels when you sin, you won't stop sinning. When sin becomes a casual practice because you feel it's owed to you or you feel because of what I've been through, God is going to understand. When you give yourself a pass like that, you're not going to stop. You won't stop until you feel what God feels. See, if you haven't taken that step close to him and draw nigh to him, then you don't know how he feels. But once you take that step, draw nigh to him, and your relationship with him becomes valuable. You depend on him talking to you. You depend on him leading you. You depend on him being there for you. You depend on him solving all your problems. Then when you sin, he backs away from you. And you feel, Lord, what did I do? Where are you? Why have you gone from me? And so you begin to seek him again. And it shows you how grave the sin was to the point to where I don't want to grieve you again, Lord. I don't want to do that anymore. So you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. If it, makes you, if it backs you away from me and makes you leave my presence or makes you back away or disgusted with me or whatever, I don't want that anymore. So Lord, forgive me. I don't want that. I want you more. I want your presence more. But see, if you've never drawn nigh to him, you don't know what that feels like. That's why it's so important to draw nigh to him. He said if you draw nigh to him, he'll do what? He'll draw nigh unto you. And the closer you get to him, the less you will even need nicotine and alcohol and music. You won't need all of that. Because all that stuff is masking a deeper issue. And God wants that issue. He wants to heal you from that issue. Amen? When we truly believe that God is holy and we should practice holiness in our lives, then our repentance will truly cause us to turn away from sin. Hebrews 12 and 14. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. God wants us operating in holiness. So he wants that issue. He wants you to finally fix it. 2020, enough has happened in 2020 to make you really, make you really want to deal with some stuff. You ought to want to put some of these things behind you. Move forward in God, trusting in him. Trusting that you are forgiven, that you are made new. And then build your relationship to, with him so that nothing is more important than him being pleased with you. This isn't a works-based message. But if you want to know for sure that God is pleased with you, then you need to do works meet of repentance. I'm not rolling dice with eternity. I ain't playing Russian roulette with eternity. I'm going to make sure I go in. They got my name in the front at the gate. Amen. I hope my wife's name is there. I hope my children's name is there. But I'm making sure my name is there. Amen. Let me close with this. James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will do what? Flee from it. Free from it. You know, nicotine and alcohol 
it's a really dirty trick that they play on your system. Because they begin to make you think that you have a problem that you don't have. It tricks your system into thinking that you have a dependency. And the reason it does that is so it will supersede the real spiritual issue that's involved. So you're not even thinking in terms of this is the devil, this is spiritual. You're thinking in terms of, oh, well, now my system just needs it. So when I go down, I need it to bring me up again. And that's a dirty trick. That's, that substance is of Satan. And it's in your way of becoming who God wants you to be. Definitely in your way of becoming. But if you submit yourself to God, what does that mean? That means submit yourself. to How do you submit to anyone? You submit yourself to God. Get the Bible out and read it. Turn things off. Take the time. It's sad that some of y'all have waited until CERN has put the dark cloud of demons over the earth and now you trying to pray for the first time. It's going to be a little harder for you because they have flooded the earth with demon spirits. People are possessed. Just had a guy tell me the lady next door to him, just old lady, just walked out of her house and said, I'm going to kill you and all your children. They had to film her, call the cops. She said she's going to kill them all. Just possessed. Amen. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you don't resist him, he ain't going nowhere. If you're taking his stuff, he's going to stay right there. But you got to resist him. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh unto you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Lord, purify my heart. And the Lord is saying, you purify your heart. <laughs> See, that messed somebody up. Wait a minute. Isn't it the Lord? You purify your Clean your own heart up. Stop doing the stuff you've been doing. You do that. And then watch God work in you. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Get before God and realize how much you need him. And then humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall then and only then lift you up. Y'all, God is a good father. He's a good father. He's a good father. So listen. Now is the time for us to just get to get as close to God as we can during this time. Be the new creation. You know, the beautiful thing that I've always had about serving God was he would always show me myself living the way I'm supposed to live. Even when I struggled in different things. He would show me in dreams and visions. He would show me walking in full obedience to him. And he would always speak to me and tell me, this is who you are. This is who I want you to be. And some things were hard because of the way I came up. Some things were hard because of the way some of the things I went through. You know, it was hard. But I had to visualize it first. God was building my faith to let me know you can do this. And this is what you teach my people. This can be done. So no matter how you grew up, no matter what happened in your home, no matter what you've been through, no matter, no matter what, this can be done. It is fully attainable. You can be the believer that God showed you you would be. All you got to do is fully yield to it. And live a life of humility and repentance. Amen? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for all of these believers, God. We are parked in our cars. We are outdoors. 
Because our world has created pandemonium through a pandemic, Father God, with no, with, with no real proof that it's even a real threat. And we out in our cars. We're just trying to be obedient, but Lord have mercy. This don't make any sense. But Father, we do know what makes sense. You make sense. Your word makes sense. The logic of your word makes sense. So while people are focused on other things, we want to be focused on you. What is this time for us? What do you want from us during this time? God, what do you want? What are you working on? What are you building in your people right now? God, that's what we want to know. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. The world doesn't love us. The world hates us. So, Father, we're not trying to figure out what the world is going to do. We want to know what you want us to do. So, Father, as we draw nigh to you, your word promises that you will draw nigh to us. As we cleanse our hands and purify our hearts, Father God, you said that you will come near to us. So, Father, we repent of all of our sins. We repent for those times when you called us and we didn't answer. We repent for those times that you knocked and we didn't open the door. We repent for those times, Father God, when you chastened after us as a loving father and we ran from you. But Father, right now, we as your believers, we give our hearts totally to you. And I just pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that this would be their prayer as well. We give ourselves to you. God, what the substance abuse is doing, what the music is doing, what the eyes, what we're watching and the environments we're going, what those things are doing. Those things are replacing something. They're in your way. They're in your place. So, Father, right now we repent of those things. We open our hearts up and trust you with that area. Father, all of those that have asked me about it, just all of the people that will be listening to this message, Father God, show them the reason why the why. Why do you need that? Why do you want that? Why do you cover that? Why do you say that? Why do you upload that? Why do you view that? Why? What is it that is missing? Father, I pray that you will feel that area with your spirit. Feel your people. You said in the last days you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So, Father, we pray for that infilling right now. But we must purify our hearts, move these things out of the way, make room so your spirit can reside in us. So, God, whatever's in the way, take it away. Whatever's in the way, give us courage to walk away from it so that we can be filled in this last hour. And we will give you glory and honor until you return. And I pray against the spirit of fear. God, when I mention the things about the sun and all the things that are happening, I don't want anyone to be fearful about it. God, because our trust isn't in the sun, not the S-U-N. Our trust is in the S-O-N. We trust you, God. We are yours. So whatever happens to this world was not meant for us. Because you said you would descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise, and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet you in the air. And so shall we forever be with you. We trust your word, and we believe it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.